If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to answer the question on your own before listening on. Our first step is to take a look at the equation that gives us the electric field due to a charged disk. So here is that expression. The chapter outlines the derivation of this equation, but for the sake of conciseness, we will omit that derivation here. Let us note that z is the distance from the center of the charged disk to whatever point we're interested in. So for example, in these pictures, z would be the distance marked here. And the question actually notes that that distance is at a distance of 2r from the disk. So in fact, maybe rather than labeling this z, we can go ahead and label that 2r. And so we can substitute 2r into this equation here and also here. So going over to picture A, we have a disk that does not have the hole in the center, so it's just a regular old charged disk. And that means that we could use this equation to calculate the electric field at this point P right here. And so we can actually label this equation E sub A to represent the electric field produced at point P by this charged disk right here. Now, in part B here, or picture B, we can set up an equation for the electric field produced by that charge disk. The strange thing is, of course, that it has a hole cut out of it. And so the electric field produced by this disk is going to be equal to the electric field that would be produced by disk A minus whatever electric field would have been produced by this region right here. Now we're cutting that out, and this is why we have to subtract the amount of electric field that would have been produced by that. So the electric field produced by that missing piece, so to speak, would be the same expression. It would be the sigma over 2 epsilon multiplied by 1 minus whatever the z distance is. Again, that distance is 2r. We'll divide that by the square root of 2r squared plus the radius of that disk. Now, the question notes that that radius would be r divided by 2. So we're going to plug that in right here. And then not forget to square it. Next, it might be helpful to simplify the expressions underneath the respective square roots. Underneath the first one, we're going to have 4r squared plus r squared, so that'll make 5r squared. And then underneath the second square root, we're going to have 4r squared plus 1 fourth r squared, and that'll simplify to 17 fourths r squared. Now, in both cases, we can actually simplify the root just a little bit further. We have an r squared term right here. That means we can actually pull that outside of the radical and call it just r. And we'll do that in the denominator of the second expression as well. And then conveniently, the r's will actually cancel out from the denominator and numerators. So now, in order to get the part by which we will decrease the electric field, what we would have to do is find the difference in the two electric fields, which would give us the amount that the electric field is decreasing, and then simply divide that by the original electric field strength, or Ea. What we'll do is take this expression right here for the electric field produced by the second disk, and we'll substitute in right there. And then of course for Ea, we'll take this expression and substitute it right there. Now the numerator simplifies nicely because we can distribute this minus sign. We'll end up with Ea minus Ea, so those will cancel. And then the minus sign will distribute here to make this positive. The terms sigma over 2 epsilon appear in the numerator and denominator, so those will algebraically cancel away. And when you punch that into your calculators, you should get roughly 0.283. And as a percentage, that would be 28.3%. So either one of these answers would be correct. In other words, we lose 28.3% of the electric field when we make the switch from disk A to disk B. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click that thumbs up and subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.